Hello and welcome to a new episode of Das Seriensprechzimmer, our podcast meaning the TV consulting room in German. You might have already seen that we had an episode with Pico Alexander and Finn Jones from Dickinson Season 2. And we also had a chance to talk to Toby Haas, who plays Edward Dickinson, Emily Dickinson's father. Please bear with me. This is not my mother tongue. So uh, I hope you still have a good time listening to this interview. Enjoy. <laughs> Hi, Toby. This is Melanie from Seriasten TV in Berlin, snowed in, in a little bit. We are a, a website that um, talks about TV shows. So hello. Thank okay. you so much for your time. Yeah. Okay, Toby. So um, how do you feel um, the show has changed and uh, evolved in the second season? Oh, I think it's... Uh, I know the second season is dealing much more with, with Emily's fame and the consequence of her making the decision to be a poet and to have that as part of her life and how it's almost as if a little bomb went off in that family and they're all forced to deal with the consequences of her decision i like that there is this one quote that i wrote down do not seek fame fame is not genuine it will use you it will destroy you What is your uptake on fame, considering that it's like a big part of being an actor uh, in this time and age? Yeah, well, yeah, I'd like to believe that a lot of people believe that fame will use you up and destroy you, but I don't believe that. I think people court fame openly now, and that, that that's a commodity that we're, especially in America, that we're trading. And... Um, I don't know if it's a great road to go down, but people seem to be very comfortable and happy about it. I'm not one of them. So how do you feel about it? Well, look, if that's the road you want to go down, feel free. You know, It's just not for me, man. I think that there's, as I've said, there's, there's more access to fame now like immediate gratification than there was when I was a kid. I mean, you can put a photo on Instagram and then you can get a few likes on it. That's a little kiss of fame right there. And then if it gets bigger and bigger, then it's more fame. And you're chasing that, chasing that fame dragon. Um, I think kids are able to do that a lot more now than they were when I was younger. I also felt that the season two a bit more than the first season. It pokes a little bit of fun, but not not like mean fun, but like charming fun. Um, at like this really woke Instagram and influencer generation. Yeah. Um, I think young kids have, uh, especially younger ones, these kids like in the cast have grown up with it as part of their lives since they were young. So their take on it is more prescient than my take. But yeah, I think it's, always good to point out the fo uh, foibles of that i think it's it's fine and yeah. the kids and their their internet and their their online existence i think is uh it's it's pretty ripe to be made fun of but we do it in a kind way it's not we're not being awful well, that, that's how i felt that it's still it's yeah. like uh it's like looking a little bit in the mirror but like with uh, with a smile on it and thinking Yeah, they're right. It's kind of it's kind of fun. It's it's light. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, after the first season of Dickinson, um, you guys already got the second and the third. So that can already be seen that the show has been a great success. Um, how does it feel um, to be a part of such a show that is already so well liked? And um, how important is the feedback that you get from fans and and everyone? Um. The feedback, it's nice when it's positive, but it's not important at all to me. Um, I like working on the show and I like the people. And I like the writing and that's the satisfaction for me, you know, to create that and to make that. And then what happens afterwards, that's, that's what happens afterwards. You know, if people thought our show was awful, I'd still like making it and I'd still appreciate the character and I'd like playing it. Yeah. Um, given that Edward is based on a real person, um, how much input do you have in shaping this character? Or um, No, I played real people before, but there's a license that you take, especially with a show like this, that 
you can't just keep the guy the way that he was. I think that'd be a little bit boring. And there's not a lot of historical writings about Edward. So we get to make a lot of it up. And his reaction to Emily, we get to make that up. There's, there's, you know, he talks about it a little bit now and again, but there's not a lot. And she talks about it at some, but there's not a lot. So that's the fun of a project like this is that you do get to make it up. And one of the funniest moments in season two to me was uh, when you were in a hole um, yeah. and, and you, were, you were saying, I'm in a hole. <laughs> and uh, who was making that particular scene for you? I mean, it, watching it, it was, it was hilarious. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was, uh, I guess it's fun to work with Jane in a big hole. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> were you surprised when this scene came when you and you were told you need to be in a hole or or you just go along with the flow i think you had to go along with it you know i didn't understand it at the time and i still don't understand it and uh what are you gonna do i guess you can't understand <laughs> every move that's made it really works <laughs> oh good okay <laughs> I watched an, an interview and some cast members said that you were most likely to be the co-worker on set reading a book on breaks. I, I yeah. myself uh, am a little bit of a bookish person. What kind of books do you enjoy when you're on set? You know, I was staying in, in uh, Tribeca at a place last year and there's this really great bookstore. Man, I forget the name of it now. Damn it. But it's a it's a mystery. I think it's the mystery bookstore, the mystery crime bookstore. So I go there now and again and get a good crime novel and go read it on set. Yeah. So it's crime for you. I think it's crime for me. And also, you know, I I like reading uh, creative folk too. There's a there's a poet, American poet Richard Hugo, this guy that I've been reading recently. He wrote a, some pretty wonderful books. But he's fun. Um, but it's nice to have something that's pretty dig uh, digestible, like a thriller or crime stuff. Because I don't want to sit on my cell phone all day. And the kids seem very comfortable with that, God love. So, you know what I really like about the show as well, and I hope I, that I can uh, put it into words. Um, it does in incorporate queerness without labeling it. And um, I think that it's part that makes Dickinson as a show special. Do you know what I mean? And can you elaborate a little bit on it? Yeah, I think it's great because they're they're... You know, we're able to explore Emily's burgeoning creativity and her burgeoning sexuality. So we're able to explore a lot of that stuff without pointing a finger at it. You know, it's it's part of the evolution of this artist and of this person, uh, regardless of her being an artist. But, you know, I mean, we're, we're able to explore it in a way that it probably, she probably never explored it like this. In fact, at the, in the day, but it's nice to be able to see that and it's done in a smart tender way and it's very gentle we're very gentle on her and they're also you know as harsh as the conditions could be around her sometimes we're, we're you know taking a very gentle hand to edward too i think as well and i think it does make it um such a like even if it's a period piece it makes it such a modern show as well i like the way that it has a a a very modern component to it. And I like the way that we can switch it back and forth because I think it informs on on both times. It informs on the 1850s and it also informs on present day. And I like it going back and forth because I think there's as much to learn going from there to now as there is from now to then. And I think maybe you, you get the young audience as well um, because it's, you know, with the music and everything, it's still such a cool show. But I could imagine that young people kind of think it's awesome. Personally, if you had to describe season two in three words, what words would that be? Emily writes big. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. You know what I really loved about the show as well um, is uh, that it, it does have some, um, I was going to say spiritual, but it's probably not even spiritual. It's like more like, supernatural elements in it yeah but without being too much and making it a, like a completely different show but it's like it's almost like poetic well good i'm there i think you hit the nail on the head it is it is poetic it's visually poetic to meet death 
and to see him walking around and in a you know in a carriage and for her to talk to him and i think it makes her it, it doesn't just make her character resonate more but it makes the idea of her being a writer resonate more and it makes her interior world resonate more and thus the interior uh the interior world of the whole show in general resonates more because of that yeah um can you tell us how challenging it is to work on a tv series in times like these is it more difficult well I haven't worked on a series yet in these times. Uh, you mean COVID times? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because yes. we finished last year about in January or December, January, something like that. I think January. And um, I was back in Los Angeles when this all hit. So this will be our first. We start shooting in another month. And this will be the yes. first time with we'll be shooting during COVID. So we'll see. Your guess is as good as mine right now. So I was thinking, but maybe that like uh, doing a press, uh, like a press junket and being at home and doing it, you know, online, maybe it's kind of nice not to have all the hustle for you guys. Maybe. Be... <laughs> yeah, maybe was... it's more of a hassle here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you already, can you tell us a little bit? I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously, you know that you can spoil anything for us, but can you tell us a little bit uh, about the upcoming season three? I don't know anything about it. We haven't gotten oh, you... the script yet. No, we'll, we'll see. And we'll, we'll probably get something in a few weeks here, but no, I imagine it's, uh, I, I do think, and I don't think this is any sort of a spoiler, but we, uh, the civil war is coming. And I think we're going to direct a lot of the issues that happened in the civil war in our show me being um from germany she is not that big here as maybe she is because she's such an american poet wouldn't yeah. you agree oh she's very yes. american yeah and 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 she's probably much more broadly influential in america than she is overseas totally unlike yeah. uh, like the opposite of jazz musicians well thank you so much for your time this bit has been a wonderful interview thank you so much for season two and season one i loved it i'm a big great. fan oh, and great. um i can't wait to see season three and i hope you have a good time sh you know uh shooting it okay thank you melanie i appreciate it this is it so if you're a fan of this tv show you can check out the interview we had with finn jones and pico alexander The second season is on Apple Plus TV. Stay healthy. Have a good time. Bye-bye.